Last time I shared how to make a mini DSO with MCU. Since many people are interested in this project, I spent some time upgrading it overall. There are changes in interface, operation logic, and circuit. After upgrading, the mini DSO is more powerful. Let me show you this new mini DSO. Introduce the changes in the circuit first. I decoupling capacitors at the power pin of MCU to keep the input voltage more stable and filter out the voltage spikes at power on to protect the MCU. They are an electrolytic capacitor 47 microfarads and ceramic capacitor 10 nanofarads. They could filter out the low and high frequency noise respectively. Another change is replacing the voltage sampling of battery from current limiting with single resistor to voltage dividing with two resistors. This is also in consideration of the safety of the MCU. Since the battery connected to the power module, there may be unpredictable situation when power on or charging. Furthermore, add an indicator for new function. They are one LED and the resistor 5K. Put these two components on the circuit board. Keep in mind, for the LED, the long pin is anode and the short pin is cathode. There's no polarity for resistor, just install it. Doing the welding, I'll show you the use of the indicator later. The welding has been completed. By the way, I changed the switch to the battery. Thus, there's no drink current after power off, but have to turn on the switch when charging. Last time, someone reminded me the foam case may produce static electricity. This issue needs to be paid attention definitely. So I removed the foam case, but it's not safe without any protection. I decided to use a high temperature tape to do the protection this time. Feeling assured with this simple protection. Let's get into the main topic now. Take a look at the interface first. Compared with first version, there are more information in the interface. Here is the minimum and maximum voltage of the waveform on display. In first version, it is a value in all sampling points. That would cause misunderstanding. It has been corrected in new version. Beside its seconds per division, the upper right shows the frequency of current waveform. This is a new feature which is very useful. Below it is also the feature you just want. This icon shows the trigger mode. A and NS represent auto, normal, and single mode respectively. I'll show you how to use these three trigger modes later. The up and down arrow indicates the trigger slope switching between rising edge and falling edge. Beside is the trigger level, it's also a new feature. In first version, the trigger level was fixed in the mid of amplitude. Customize the trigger level is an essential setting for single and normal trigger mode. The fail will be shown if the signal does not cause a trigger, and disappear when triggered. This is the voltage range. The auto about the digits indicates auto range. The auto disappear when switched to manual range. The run below the digits indicates the sampling status. Switching between run and stop. The ruler at the bottom left indicates the position of waveform in the buffer. When scroll waveform horizontally, the indicator on ruler moves synchronously. Settings interface is same as the first version. They are plot mode, LSB, and voltage of battery. The plot mode could switch between vector and dots, and calibrate the sampling voltage by adjusting the LSB. Next, let's talk about how to operate. All the operations are completed by this EC11 encoder. The input include single click, double click, long price, rotate, and rotate while pressing. The resources of this encoder have been almost exhausted. If there are new features, may need additional input component. Let's get into the topic. Double-click the encoder, switching between parameter and waveform scroll mode. In parameter mode, adjust the parameters by rotating the encoder. Switching between options by rotating while pressing. 
single-click the encoder to run stop sampling. Double-click the encoder to enter the waveform scroll mode. In waveform scroll mode, scroll waveform horizontally by rotating encoder. Scroll waveform vertically by rotating while pressing. Scroll operations only available when stop sampling. Long press the encoder to enter settings. In settings, switching between options by rotating while pressing the encoder. Adjusting parameters by rotating the encoder. Long press the encoder to return to the main interface. Meanwhile, all parameters will be saved into EEPROM. Next, let's talk about each function. Changing seconds per division could scale waveform horizontally. Since the limitation amount of sampling points, scaling waveform horizontally is not available when stop sampling. The waveform will disappear if change time scale when stop, and the waveform will appear if return to the stop time scale. Regarding the trigger mode, we will focus on it in the end. The trigger slope determines the trigger point on the rising or falling edge. Actually, the trigger slope may not make much sense when sweeping continuous signal. It's an important parameter for normal and single trigger mode. Trigger level determines the trigger position. Trigger position will be put at the center of chart. We can see the trigger position changing when adjusting the trigger level. When trigger level go beyond the waveform, trigger fail will occur. Then the waveform will scroll irregular. Trigger level is also an important parameter for normal and single trigger mode. The waveform could be scaled vertically by adjusting the voltage range. If you want to use out range, rotate the encoder clockwise continuously. You will enter the out range. In out range, rotate the encoder anti-clockwise to enter manual range. Scaling waveform vertically is also available when stop sampling. Finally, let's talk about the trigger mode. About the trigger mode, it may be confusing to who are not familiar with DSO. Actually, the symbol showing waveform function in first version just is the out mode. In out mode, the waveform is always showing whether trigger occurred or not. Using out mode to observe the repetitive signal is no problem. But we could not use the auto mode to capture a single shot waveform. The rising or falling time of signal may be only several milliseconds, even microseconds. To capture the rising or falling of signal, we need to use normal or single mode. Let's capture the waveform during a switching power supply power on as an example. First, we use the auto mode to see what the results would be. Turn on the switching power supply. We can see the voltage change from 0 volts to 5 volts, but the rising waveform flashed by. Let's use the single mode to try again. Put DS105 to E and Mini DSO in parallel to compare the results. Before input signal, we need to adjust the trigger settings. We want to capture the signal changing from 0 volts to 5 volts, so set trigger slope as rising edge. Adjust the trigger level between 0 to 5 volts. We choose the mid value 2.5 volts. Turn on the switching power supply. Both DS1052E and Mini DSO capture the waveform. Compared with DS1052E, the waveform is same. By scaling the waveform on Mini DSO, we saw the small change in the waveform also be captured clearly. We can read from DS1052E, the voltages as these two turning points are 4.1 volts and 3.81 volts. By scrolling waveform vertically, we get the lower turning point on mini DSO is 3.8 volts. The upper turning point is 4.1 volts. The sampling precision is decent. Let's do another test with this circuit. This is a circuit measuring inductance and the saturation current I shared before. Check out previous video if you are interested. Press the measure button. Both Mini DSO and DS1052E capture the waveform. The trigger level is 0.1 volts only this time. The seconds per division also reach the limitation to 100 microseconds. Due to the speed limit of MCU, 
100 microseconds per division is not available in single and normal mode. Although the waveform is small and could not be scaled horizontally anymore, for such a small signal can be triggered, that's pretty good. Next, let me show you the difference between single and normal mode. In single mode, the sampling will stop at each trigger. We need to restart sampling by clicking the encoder. In normal mode, the sampling is always running and waiting for the next trigger after each trigger. Then we could input the signal continuously to capture the waveform. Choosing single or normal mode according to different case, it would be facilitated. If the input signal not satisfy the trigger settings in single or normal mode, no waveform will be shown on the display and waiting for the trigger all the time. In this case, generally we switch the trigger mode to auto first, adjust the trigger level and trigger slope according to the waveform. After the trigger settings adjusted correctly, the waveform could be captured in normal or single mode. Finally, let me show you the use of indicator. Generally, the indicator on means the sampling is running. The more important use is in single and normal trigger mode. Before getting into the trigger stage, pre-sampling is required. After clicking to start, the indicator will not on during pre-sampling stage. We should not input signal until the indicator comes on. The longer time scale selected, the longer waiting time of pre-sampling. All introductions completed, let's talk about the issue. Same as the first version, negative voltage still could not be measured. The waveform will stop at 0 volts. Another issue, if input PWM signal at high speed sampling, the sampling results will jump to maximum frequently. I asked the STC engineer about this issue, but didn't get a clear explanation. The jumping issue also related to the quality of each MCU. This one is the worst piece in my hand. The other pieces are not so serious like this one, but all of them have jumping issue. Regarding this project, I still plan to update. On the one hand, optimizing the function, on the other hand, I plan to transfer this project to STM32 or ESP32 because I know many people tend to use them and I have spent a lot of time on the jumping issue and could not solve it. So I might as well try a new platform, may make this project better. I have uploaded the source code and all files to GitHub. Please refer the description below the video. Hope you like this project and see you next time!